Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Supergirl. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I thought it was an interesting situation with um, Alex and... Uh, John this episode because they're kind of both on opposite spectrums of the situation like Alex is kind of drowning in her despair even seeing this line and I thought it was so heartbreaking which was basically I don't deserve to breathe because for her it's like I failed at my job I'm supposed to protect Kara the fact that I couldn't save her I couldn't protect her we don't know if we could ever get back like she's drowning in despair because I think because obviously it's been a core aspect for Alex. It's, it's like, yeah, Kara may be the one the powers, but I'm the older sister. She's been my responsibility. And yes, they did always have the best relationship growing up, but obviously it got better. And it's definitely grown. They've grown so close. They're, they are each other's foundation. You know, uh, we've seen that that relationship deepen and grow so much. Or even just a co- over, the cro- over the course of this series alone is what I'm trying to say. And I think... Because of that, she feels like she, it's like my number one job is protecting my sister, and I failed. And like I said, she almost blames herself, saying, like, I don't even deserve to breathe. Just, she can't breathe. You know, and Kelly's there to kind of pull her back and saying, like, you know, in moments like this when you just want to give up, these are the moments you have to, like, step forward and help those who are in need. Like, at least, you know, you might be kind of drowning in the darkness, but, like, Helping those you care about, those who are in need, is kind of like a necessary step for you, you know, realizing that there's still stuff here to fight for that don't give up. And, you know, John is on the opposite spectrum where it's like he's pushing his feelings down because for him it's like he thinks he needs to soldier on. And it's the thing of rather than feeling what he's feeling, he'd rather not feel anything. It's like, you know, he took what McGon said and he kind of went to the most utmost extreme of like, you know, there was no balance. He just overcompensated and he ended up being more like, let's charge forward um, because much like. It was, like I said, both him and Alex were kind of feel, feeling the same thing, hopelessness. They just responded differently. She just kind of, like, shut down. He just charged forward. And I thought that was an interesting parallel that kind of creeped between these two characters. Even to the point, could we learn so much about the um, Phantoms? I, I thought that was kind of pretty dope. Because I was asking the question, like, you know, were they born in, like, the Phantom Zone? It's like, no, they're aliens from a different planet that basically they conquer places by basically devouring uh, being people's souls, like Silas, we see him become a, um, become a phantom, and, uh, which is interesting to know that, like, because, like, yeah, it's like, Brandy was talking about, yeah, in the 31st century, there's basically a way to quantify what makes a human unique, what you call a soul, yeah, these things devour that, so... That's, you know, that's their means of obviously like kind of drowning your own misery and then attacking you and turning you into one of them. That's how this main phantoms kind of started making so many, as they say, progenies like uh, like other turning other people into fellow um, phantoms. It seems like they're not as strong as the phantoms, but they're still strong enough to kind of be comparable on some level because it doesn't seem like because later on the main one teleports away. So it seems like the others don't have that mainline um, ability, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting. But um, McGon trying to keep John more on par being like, oh, yeah, you want Brandy to make these inhibitors, but it's like, there's no guarantee they'll work, but John was so like, we gotta charge for it, we gotta move forward, don't, I, I'm ordering you, Magan, that we're gonna do this, but Magan kinda goes off on her own, and it's just like, you know, John blames himself, cause it's like, for him, it's like, he let his emotions get the best of him, so not only did, for him, it's like, not only did I fail to save Supergirl last time, but also, a phantom is released in this world, and that's on me, so he thought his emotions were getting in the way, but then, like, once again, trying to overcompensate and going to the extreme of not trying to feel what he's feeling, ended up causing more problems on his own, so he was just kind of in a place of, you know, Magan now is in this position where she, you know, once the transformation happens, it seems like it's inevitable. Um, currently, I, we don't. It doesn't seem. We don't know if there's a cure. Hopefully, they'll be able to find one for all the victims who were changed. But um, Alex talked to him, kind of using what Kelly told her earlier in the episode, saying that you know, it's a you know that that hopelessness. You know, it's understandable, but you know, you have to get up and fight for the people you care about because McGon is still here. Yeah, despite the whole you know. Um, car thing because for her it's like I couldn't even get out of bed I didn't want to I didn't want to I didn't want to live in a world without 
Kara in it. And so, you know, she understands it's like you're in a, the exact same place I am, this hopelessness, but it's like Magan's still here. You can do some, even if it's the smallest chance of figuring out a way to do it, we got to do all we can. So they end up doing like this Martian ritual where obviously because they uh, bound each other um, back in episode one of the season, because of that, a part of Magan's soul exists in him. So as her soul's leaving, that he slices that fraction of her soul off of his and kind of implants in her body and it's able to reverse uh, the change. I'm curious are there going to be any long-lasting effects of that. I'm also curious, like, you know, I mean, it, they had the benefit of this. It's like, how do you replicate that for everyone else that got transformed? Like Silas, for example, you know? Luckily, things kind of worked out down the front. Once again, they caught all the other um, phantoms, but except for the main, main one that managed to escape. So I do like that. Obviously, you know, John apologizes to McGon and it's like from now on, like I'm not going to be, you know, pushing my fears down and not sharing them with you. We are a team, you know, we make a and she's like, we always were a good team, you know. So them kind of getting closer again and obviously Alex taking that opportunity to be there for Kelly saying like move in with me because the fact is life is so unpredictable and I want to wake up every day that you know and tell you like I you know be next to the woman I love and I'm curious like there was frostbite from the phantom I'm wondering is that like obviously she just kind of got like her hand kind of got like uh like kind of like almost a frostbite thing but I'm like I'm curious is there going to be anything from that like will there be any ramifications it doesn't seem like it just seems like oh her hand got hurt but I mean you, you never know um what could potentially kind of be the fallout from them, but we'll kind of have to wait and see on that front. But um, Alex had kind of given up hope, but I think this kind of reaffirmed that kind of sealed their resolve. Like, luckily, they both have people that kind of act as their foundation, their rock, that kind of keep them both going, even when they're when they're feeling kind of hopeless. They have so many people around them to kind of lift them up to tell them, yeah, that life is worth. There's plenty that we're fighting for. There's still life is worth fighting for. So. I think this is just going to uh, steal their resolve into trying to find a way to save Carb. At the same time with this whole situation, we have Brainy, who's so angry at Lex, even saying, like, Lex should be hearing a Kryptonian heartbeat. It's like, you get to sleep at night. How can you sleep at night knowing all that you've done? You should be rotten in a prison, you bastard. And um, actually working with Lena, who's trying to block uh, Lex out of the company trying to save the company from Lex. But in the end, it's like, oh yeah, my new uh, DA bro uh, buddy, yeah, he's going to bring charges against you unless you hand the counts back over to me in an hour. So Brainy ends up helping her by transferring the funds that he had stashed away and kind of put them in the children's wing, which obviously Lex didn't appreciate. Going full blue super villain, like, oh, how could she give it to sick kids? It's like, man, you are that self... I mean, are we that surprised that you're that self-centered of a prick, but it's just kind of like... It's it's like... Because for him, it's like he gets aggravated so much when she, like... like it's like, all right, go, cool play. Good play, sis. I got you. Um, and literally sets fire to the damn... Um, Children talk to it. It's like you could have killed kids and you did it just to give your sister the middle finger. That's petty. We've seen time and time again how petty he is. It's like it's he wants to act like, oh, I'm so brilliant, I'm so amazing. And it's like at the same time, you are so damn petty. And I like that moment. And it's this powerful moment between Lena and um, Brady where it's like Br Lena's like, he did this just to get back at me. I hate him. I hate his face. I hate his suit. I just hate everything about him. I wish I could kill him. And Brady's like, let's do that. And she, like Lena was kind of taken aback by it. He's just talking about like, oh, I, I, we can like cut his body up. He's like, I know plans. We can scatter him across the um, universe. He's like, I know planets that will immediately turn him um into carbon and then into like that can decompose carbon in an instant. Like it was scary hearing Brainy talk like that. But Lena kind of pulls him back. It's like you can't do that. He's like, you already did. It's like yes, and I I gave into the darkest version of myself because of it, and I don't want you to do that, Brainy. Because for Brainy, he no longer has the inhibitors. He's feeling everything, and it's just like you know, it's like everything like he thought he was doing the right thing like you know trying to take out leviathan and it's like he ended up helping 
forged a path for, um, once again, like, Brainy thought it was the lesser of two evils, and it ended up potentially being the, like, there's no, it was a lose-lose situation, you know, like, Leviathan needed to be stopped, but also Lex didn't need to be in a powerful position that he is, so, like, Brainy's just so aggravated, he's just so frustrated, he breaks the tablet and being like, I hate him, I hate him, and, um, you know, and they say, like, I miss her. I'm assuming they're talking, I assume they're talking about Kara, where it's like, you know, it's like, it's not fair that the bad guy gets to just live his life, and we have no idea how to get Kara back. It's not fair, you know? It's like, life shouldn't be so unfair like that. You know, for, um, for Lena, she's like, I miss her too. And so when the time comes, it's like, oh, you want to kind of go another round? And Lena's just like, you know what? I'm not. I'm done. I, you, I'm leaving um, Lex Corp for, to you. He's like, Oh, you're just, you're just, oh, I, you're saying that, but the fact of the matter is you don't really mean it. She's like, no, I do. Like, I hate you, but I love me more in the sense that, like, I'm not going to, like, drown myself. Continue this game we've always, it's always been uh, tit for tat with, between them. Like, they've always been in competition. There's always been a war of attrition between Lena and Lex ever since they were kids. And it's like, I'm tired of this game. Like, I'm not going to devote so much of my life hating you. Like, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to leave you behind because drowning in this hatred I have for you, I'm just, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to be happy, you know? So even if I lose everything I made here at LexCorp, even if I don't get another cent from LexCorp, as long as, Elcorp, as long as I'm away from you, I, I, that's the best thing ever. And there's a part of Lex that looks disappointed it's like he's looking at the article from catco and it's like oh it seems like you won sir and he's just quiet and it's like what do you what's the man who has everything do and it's like get more because for lena she's like i don't have to do anything you've shown time and time again who you are that your hubris will ultimately be your own self-destruction which i kind of like brought up earlier like you know i thought like i figured that'd be he's always going to be his own undoing He's going to stretch out too far, but it's like, Lena's just like, I'm not going to be in this game with you. I'm not, you know. And I think on some level, that kind of breaks Lex because it's like, for him, it's like, he talks down to his sister, but he enjoys that. Like, it's like, it's the only, like, like, he feels like, oh, I have a worthy adversary to a certain extent. Like, he likes tearing his sister down, but he enjoys what they have because without that, he kind of has nothing. Because he has no real relationships with people because people are just a means to an end for him. He has, you know, there's no one in his life that he actually cares about because he is the cruel, manipulative bastard that he is that he just uses people. So he has no one. Lena has people she cares about. So, you know, she's able to kind of break the Luther curse and just like, I'm just going to live my life with the people I care about. I'm going to get my best friend back. You know, and I think for Lex, he has no one other than Lena, like what they had. Yes, it's it's a twisted relationship, but it's all he had. It's the only relationship he's had. It's the only constant relationship he has. Like, you know, it's like because people have always been a means to an end to him. So he has no one in his corner. So that rivalry between him and his sister, that's the only thing. That's the only human connection he has. Once again, twisted that that's the thing. But that I think that's so fascinating. And I think not having her will send him over the edge. Like, I think it is a thing of like, well, I'm going to do this. No one's going to stop me. I'm going to gain more and more power. And I'm so curious to see how that ultimately is going to play out. Like, I think he is going to start being super rash about things. You know, it's like, he doesn't have anything to kind of cling on to. Like, I think that's the closest thing to his humanity he has to cling on to is his rivalry with his sister. Once again, sad that that's all you have in your life. So we'll see where that goes. Cause, but I just thought that was such an interesting scene and back and forth between them. Like I said, he was almost like, no, you're, you're not done. Wait, what? No, you can't just walk away. It's like, yeah, I can. not And I'm going to. It's like, it's almost like, no, don't don't walk away from me. You you need me. You need me just as much as I need you. It doesn't say that, but it, it reeks of that desperation. Like, I need, you need this as much as I do. And it's like, wait, you can go off and be happy? with No, no. Like, I think, once again, he needs to also feel superior to people. So feeling better and more superior and outmaneuvering his system, it brought meaning to his life. Without that, it's like, what else do you have? So that's why you're just like, uh, I'm going to become the most powerful person. Once again. What was his plan in the beginning of the season? Uh, in episode one? Oh, I'm gonna make everyone love me. It's like that's sad. That that's your goal is to make people love you so that you can kind of get away with everything. Sure, but it's also like I think that reigns so true that you're so broken on the inside that you need people to love you. It's like that's that's actually sad, you know. So I think that just kind of fits the point. Uh, I'm trying to get across even more. So 
there's that aspect. And then we had the whole situation in the Phantom Zone, which I thought was interesting, where Kara, you know, and her dad latch onto a Phantom, but they just get sent to another section of the Phantom Zone. Kara ends up hurting her leg, but apparently, like, nothing healed. I guess because time is kind of at a standstill in this world. Like, Kara doesn't have the sun to heal anyway, but I think it's, like, no matter what the injury, like, you're never going to heal in this world because the world is kind of stuck in a perpetual state of, like, well, I guess whatever state you're in is kind of the state you're stuck. So, oh, you have a broken leg? It's going to stay like that. There's no, like, natural process of healing. Um... Look, there was also these other people. I mean, to be fair, it's, it is a prison world, so it makes sense that there's going to be other people. I didn't even talk about that, but I um, I meant to talk about that early when I brought up the um, Phantoms. But I forgot to talk about the fact is that, yeah, like I, like I was bringing up earlier, they are aliens that were basically put into the Phantom Zone. And it's like, considering what they're able to do, they're not as powerful as they were because they brought worlds to an end with what they've done, like, you know. But in this world, they've lost a lot of their power, and because of that, it just makes them the perfect guard dog. So it just kind of like, oh, we, we took them out, but also they work as the perfect guards. Um, which is interesting for them to be kind of like, the Kryptonians create the Phantom Zone to be their prison, as well as many others. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, for it just them, you know, car to be stuck in his cir circumstances. I guess irony isn't maybe irony would be the word behind it. I don't know that. I, I guess it's not really an ir ironic situation necessarily. I just I think it's interesting. Kryptonians put them there, and now like they're keeping obviously car and her dad from. I mean, granted, there's other aspects to that, but I, I thought it was interesting. We ran into other people. I was like, well, it is a prison, so it makes sense. But they, she runs into a random lady that's like a little kind of kooky and I'm like who is this at first I'm like I don't trust this lady Kara but then we find out um, later on it's like oh she's a fifth it's like it's like oh I got this orb and I don't have my powers and then Kara's like are you a fifth dimensional um, imp and it's like wait do you know many it's like well yeah I know one um, his name is Mixopita like I know him I'm always butchering its name I, I feel like I never say it right and then she's like, oh my god, you know Mix? And it's like, yeah, I mean, he's always kind of a bit of a troublemaker. It's like, oh yeah, but, you know, Car's like, well, the last time I saw him, he was doing good. It's like, right, I forgot. Because it's like, right, Thomas Lennon was playing the character now, and it was like, yeah, he was, like, he was helping, like, Car was kind of at a low point, and he was there kind of, like, sparking her back up. It was like a, it was almost like, oh, look at the greatest hits type of thing of, like, super, I want to say it was like, wasn't it episode, I could be mistaken, wasn't it like episode 100, I believe that episode was? Um, like I said, I could be wrong. I believe that was episode 100, if I remember correctly. Uh, I really loved that episode. But it's interesting to me, like, oh, another, uh, fifth dimension, like, but th that made me even more suspicious, like, well, you know how, like, schemey, like, you know, which I also think that's so interesting, is, like, that's an element that's been here in the show, because, like, I want to say the first time Mix showed up was season three, wasn't it? I don't remember. I don't even remember when that other episode was was that season was that last season or was that season four i want to say that was last season that episode maybe it's so interesting meet, meeting another um fifth dimensional imp it's like like i said it's just an angle that's been here that we haven't really dived into too much because i think there's been three related episodes to fifth dimensional imps like obviously mix when he first popped up the second time but also what wasn't there an episode of some shenanigans happening because of something he left behind i believe it was like maybe the next episode or something like that i don't i don't remember it, it's kind of interesting to think about but i was like i like i said ah i don't know you could trust her like i said mix is kind of like a troublemaker in his own right but it turns out uh nixley is a princess and when she was talking about her dad, I thought was interesting. She was like, oh, the Mad Men. And I was like, I feel like I vaguely know that character. Because I did a video a couple years ago where I, like, like I think when Mick Sopedelic was introduced in this series, I did a video kind of looking him up, like, who the hell is this dude? And obviously he's had different iterations, uh, his story, backstory. I, I don't remember. I think, like I said, it was a couple years ago. But there's, like, a comic book run, like, more of the, like, old, I don't know if it was, like, Golden or Silver Age. He actually had a really depressing-ass storyline. I was like, oh, that's, that's heartbreaking, his circumstances. I don't know if that's a thing of, like, him and, like... I, I think he becomes a king at one point in time, like, in, in the fifth dimension. I don't know. Like, obviously, it's like, like I said, there's been so many iterations, the character's, like, background, as well as his whole circumstances. Because, like, it's like, oh, it's the fifth dimensional thing, technology, or is it actual magic? That's actually something that's kind of flip-flopped, I think, in, in the comic books on, on that. Regardless, I'm going on a tangent, but I was like, that, that when Nixie, 
Nixley mentioned her dad. I was like, he sounds familiar. That basically, he doesn't want her to have the throne. Didn't want anyone else because he's paranoid and narcissistic. It's like, oh, some parallels between um, him and Lex, interestingly enough. Because at first she was like, oh, like, you know, Car. he's like, she's like, oh, you must be one some, like, some big time criminal to end up here. It's like, no, Car's like, no, I'm, I was sitting here by a madman. He's like, sure you are, and I'm a princess. And it's like, I find that funny because you literally were, end up being revealed, like, wait, you really are a princess. But her dad killed her brother just because he was kind and loved by the people. And it's like, couldn't have him on a throne. But it's like, my dad didn't think I was worth anything. Wasn't worth enough to even kill. So he sent me here and locked away my magic. So now I'm kind of stuck. But Kara, you know, being who she is. She is the, the paragon of hope. You know, that she was able to reach, like, you know, tell her, like, no, like, you're not worthless. Like, you know... Even without our powers, there's still so much that we can do if we work together. So, you know, not letting anything stop them. And it actually inspired, um, it inspired, uh, Nixley. And I think the orb for her, she never considered using it to open off the shackle because I think for her it was like, okay, this is, this is, there's a few sparks left in this, so I need to save this for something else. But I guess it's like, yeah, this thing has kind of been there the entire time. It's like, you just have to, like, she was so downtrodden about herself being like, no, I don't. I don't, this is kind of what I deserve, like, I'm not good enough of getting out of here, like, I, I'm not good enough to make my escape, and she didn't believe in herself, and luckily, Kara did, and that encouraged her, and so I was like, oh, so, she helps Kara, they end up rescuing his dad, I thought it was interesting, because she talks about the fact is that she was like, yeah, like, this world being fractured in this, she's like, I have memories of stuff I know I didn't, that didn't happen, I was like, is she experiencing crisis, or is that actually, like, the Phantom Zone doing that? I don't know. I think it's kind of implying, like, the longer you're here, the more it messes with your memories, kind of make you see things that aren't here. And I'm like, are we going to find out her dad isn't even real? At the very least, that maybe it's a phantom or something parading as her dad just because it knew this would be the easiest way. I don't know. I was just, I was like, there's, the fact is they dropped that information made me think, like, there's got to be something to that. Um, just also, like, the look on her dad's face, like, who are you? I'm like... He, I don't know, he looked a little nervous, like, damn it, I can't have someone with magic around here who could potentially expose me. Like, that's why I'm like, I don't, I don't think that's actually her dad. There might be something, I think there's going to be a tragic turnout to this circumstances. I don't know. Whether it's Nixley, like, uh, it's like, oh, wait, we're going to get out of here together. It's like, with your magic, I think we'll be able to, you know, find, like, my mom made the Phantom Zone, so she'd be able to, well, she made, like, a back door so that we can get out, so... Together, we can do that. So, I'm like, I'm curious. Uh, once again, Fifth Dimensional Imp can be very, I was about to say contink uh, continkerous, but I don't know if that's necessarily the right word I'd use. Maybe more so... Um, I don't know. They're, they can be a little... I guess shady would be the closest word I can think of. Uh, I don't know. It's just you, you have to be like... Mm. Around like you know fifth dimensional M's. I just it's just kind of like a mm, I want, I might want to watch your bat. Like not like they'll stab you in the bat, but they can be just like silly and just like oh um, a little chaos inducing. That's why I'm like I I don't know. We'll we'll see. Maybe maybe I'm kind of judging um, Nixley like too harshly, but it's just like I don't know. I'm curious to see what kind of happens on that front. Like whether her getting out is going to be good thing, bad thing. I mean she might be, but I also like once again I don't trust Kara's dad. It's just. Once again, don't know if it's just me being paired or just, it seems off. I, once again, I've been having my tinfoil hat on about a lot of TV shows. I'm like, ah, I always get that feeling like, oh, I don't, I shouldn't trust this character. And then it ultimately turns out like, oh, it's fine that, you know, it's like, I've had that situation happen where I was so adamant about not trusting a character, but it's like, oh, they ended up being okay. And I was completely wrong to like completely distrust them. So I'm, we'll see if this ends up being one of those circumstances. But, um. I'm really interested to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. Like I said, in particular, whether that is a crisis thing of like her remembering things like that fits. But also it's like, I wonder how, what, what kind of effect crisis had on fifth dimensional beings? I mean, fifth dimension is just another dimension in the multiverse, I would assume. I, mean, I would assume like every planet in the multiverse um, has their fifth dimension, or at the very least, like, every earth in the multiverse had its fifth dimension, so I'm like, what What did Crisis do to that, you know, stuff like that, I never, I never even thought about it, I was like, like I said, it's another dimension, so every dimension and everything in the multiverse collapsed, and now upon one Earth, so I, I don't know, 
maybe we'll kind of dive into that potentially uh, going forward. Uh, like I said, I'm really interested to see uh, where all this takes us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the force, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.